Major phone carriers make you sign contracts with rigid data plans to trap you into a kind of forced phonogamy. Sounds pretty insecure if you ask me. At Consumer Cellular, we believe in a more consensual and healthy form of phonogamy, free of contracts and more flexible to your data needs. This way, you stick around not because we force you to with contracts and fees, but because you love our phone plans. Like ardently love our phone plans. Phonogamously. Consumer Cellular. When Freedom calls, we're here to answer. Call us at 1-888-FREEDOM. Want to hear a more diverse perspective on art? Tune in to Speaking of Art, the official podcast of Sharjah Art Foundation, featuring conversations with some of the most prominent artists and curators from Asia, Africa, and around the world. Listen to Speaking of Art wherever you get your podcasts. The news is live on Joe 99.7 FM and hits 103.9 FM in Accra and Kumasi. We are on Love 99.5 FM and over 30 affiliates across Ghana's 16 regions, including Jubilee and Sun City Radios, Keta, Saboba FM, Saboba and A1 Radio, Bolgatanga. Get radio, TV and online content on the MyJoyOnline.com interactive app for Android and iOS devices. Coming up, the Minerals Commission rejects license application for mining in Kakum National Park and vows no clearance for mining activities in the protected area. Also, the West African Examinations Council investigators to interrogate over 22,000 students over alleged mass cheating as scripts remain withheld. Same material, the same errors in spelling. We would send our officers to our re- the regions where they are going to meet with the candidates one-on-one in business. Interest rates fall for the first time after 36 weeks as government secures 29.03% over subscription of treasury bills. Details on the Joy Business Report. And later, deteriorating conditions around Obeche Bilamte interchange affecting health and businesses according to traders in Abosuka and Kanishi and Graphic Road areas. Based on some challenges in terms of uh, availability of funds uh, for them to be able to do that. We returned to the project site four months since our last visit and find that conditions have indeed worsened. I am Amisi Nyamiche Thompson. Let's delve into the details now. The Minerals Commission says it has rejected and deleted from its online register an application by a company seeking a license to mine in the Kakum National Park. In a statement signed by its chief executive officer, the commission said it will not give clearance for any form of mining to take place in the Kakum National Park. My colleague Maxwell Lagmapa joins me in studio with details of the statement. Maxwell, what are the details? Well, Mamisi, it says the attention of the Minerals Commission has been drawn to publications on social media that some civil society organizations in the country have vehemently kicked against the attempt by mining firm to mine in the Kakum National Park in the central region. Now, um, according to the CSOs, the move follows an application by the High Street Limited to the Minerals Commission for a license to mine in the Kakum National Park. The statement says the commission wishes to inform the CSOs and the public that the application by High Street Limited was rejected and therefore cannot be processed or considered whatsoever. Consequently, um, the Commission has deleted the application from the online mining cadaster. Um, the Commission wishes to assure the public that no mineral rights, whether for prospecting or mining, shall be considered or granted in the Kakum National Park. Thank you, Maxwell. Now, thousands in the capital were left terrified after an earth tremor Sunday morning. However, the Ghana Geological Survey Authority is urging the public to remain calm and go about their normal duties as it continues to create awareness to ensure public safety and minimize risk. It says earthquakes and tremors cannot be accurately predicted with the current scientific knowledge. My colleague Elton Brove has details of a statement from the authority and joins me in studio with details. Elton, what is the authority saying? Well, it says on Sunday, an F tremor occurred at approximately 7.20 a.m. in parts of the Greater Accra region. The event had a magnitude of 3.0 on the rector still. The epic center, according to the statement, is about 7 kilometers off Wager in the Greater Accra with the Ghana Geological Survey Authority said it is committed to the continuous monitoring of these events and informing the public appropriately to ensure public safety and minimize risks. Education and sensitization of the public on awareness and response during F tremor is important and currently being undertaken by the authority. The public is urged to remain calm and go about their normal duties. While many took to social media
media to express their fear when the incident happened. In fact, a good number of them were unhappy. There was no major warning from the authority. The authority is fighting back. The authority says that unfortunately the earthquakes and tremors cannot be accurately forecasted with current scientific knowledge. While seismic activity can be monitored, predicting the exact timing and location of an earthquake remains a complex challenge due to dynamic nature of aircraft. Well, thank you, Elton. And that's the response of the Ghana Geological Survey Authority. Now, starting this week, WIAC investigators will be questioning about 22,000 candidates whose scripts have been flagged and withheld for their involvement in what WIAC describes as a mass cheating. The council says initial observations show that some copied each other with similar sentence structures and even repeated similar mistakes. John Cuppy is head of public affairs at WIAC. We would send our officers to our re- the regions where they are going to meet with the, uh, the candidates one-on-one and put before them whatever we have found. And then we ask them to defend themselves if they are able to tell us something that is uh, relevant in terms of the fact that they are innocent. Then we'll see if they are guilty also, we would uh, take action appropriately. Most of it is based on collusion, have the same material pro- provided as answers to the questions. Public Affairs Director at WIG, John Capi. Now, Information Minister Kojo Oponkrumah says the 2024 budget will seek to bring about economic stability by reducing the high cost of living and inflation. Speaking on the probe on Joy News, the minister explained President Okufuado has sanctioned what it called a growth plan, which has been approved by cabinet to deal with economic challenges currently being experienced. The government's objective is to quickly bring back stability. Inflation went very high up into the 50s through a lot of monetary policy intervention. It is coming down gradually. Uh, Cost of living is also very, very, very high. And uh, the government has been working to introduce a number of measures to try and arrest, if not bring down, the cost of living. Growth, which is important because that's what ensures that the economy is expanding and creating jobs. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Ken Oferiata is expected to release funds to the contractor working on the demolished La General Hospital this week. Now, to, be win- to begin work, the minority has threatened to reject the 2024 budget if enough commitment is not given on the facility demolished before the 2020 election. There's more in the following report. It's been close to four years since the La General Hospital was demolished to make way for a new ultra-modern facility, as promised by President Ekufuado. Since then, not a single structure has been erected on the people of La and adjoining communities who relied on that facility have had to go to other hospitals. In a fiery statement on the floor of parliament a week ago, MP for La Dadekutupon, Rita Odolesoa, accused government of abandoning the people of La. As the elected representative of the good people of La Dadekutupon, I see and hear the frustrations of residents of La, Teshi and Osu about the delayed promise to deliver an ultra-modern international and 21st century hospital. MP for the Dudu, Neil Ante Van Der Poy, threatened that he and his colleagues will not even allow the budget to come to the floor if adequate commitments are not made in respect of the demolished hospital. I am the chairman of the Greater Crack Caucus of the minority. You are on our land. And I'm assuring you, if we don't see it in the budget, we will not make the budget in this house come out. Well, it appears the people of La are getting answers now. Minister for Trade and Industry and a member of cabinet, KT Hammond, says the people of La have not been abandoned. The final minister was about making money available to the contractor. They're already on the the ground. Minister for Trade and Industry Katie Hammond ending that report. Now conditions at the stalled Obichibi Lamte Interchange project site in Accra is worsening for users and those doing business within the Abosoka in Kanishi and the Graphic Road Enclave. Gaping potholes, dust during dry conditions, stagnant waters and mouths during wet conditions are making life unbearable for road users and traders. My colleague Chrissy Kwating Adai returns to the project site after four months and finds that con- Conditions are deteriorating. Here's his report. The Obeche Bilamte interchange is the main access road to the central business district of Accra. It is also the access road to the famous Abusi Okai spare parts market, as well as Ghana's premier and biggest health facility. The halting of the project is believed to be in relation to Ghana's IMF program. Since the situation has been worsening, potholes here have become bigger, making it almost impossible for drivers to manage 
run over the roads under the interchange. I, I'm just coming from the market to get some spare parts. And then, you know, you work, you get money and use it to buy spare parts all the time. And it's right in the boots. Ghana is old, like 60 years and above, and we are still constructing roads. I don't get it. The situation is even worse for those who trade within the enclave. Both wet and dry conditions have some impact on them. Because the... the they haven't finished the road. Most of the times, you understand, a lot of traffic. And people cannot get car instantly because the roads are not completed. A section of the Ghanaian public are backing the push to cut the number of ministers, deputies, as well as constituencies in the country. This follows the Constitutional Review Consultative Committee's proposal to cut the number of ministers to 25 and the removal of all deputy and regional ministers out as part of a comprehension comprehensive constitutional reform lesson to chair of the review committee clara berry cassati we are even talking about removal of all deputy ministers what's the basis for that suggestion we are cutting down the size of government so that we cap the ministers our recommendation is to cap ministers at 25 25 not more than 25. Ghana doesn't need more than 25 ministers to run. Interesting. Revolutionary. 25 ministers. Yes. No, no deputies. deputy ministers. No deputies. No. And constituents, constituencies too should be capped. Now we have um, already have 270. 275 with the possibility of 276 of, with SAL. Exactly. Yes. You are saying... And that's it for the bulletin in our top story. Minerals Commission rejects Langton's application for mining in Kakum National Park vows no clearance for mining activities in the protected area. Business is next on the Super Morning Show. FM radio for the discerning listener. Want to hear a more diverse perspective on art? Tune in to Speaking of Art, the official podcast of Sharjah Art Foundation, featuring conversations with some of the most prominent artists and curators from Asia, Africa, and around the world. Listen to Speaking of Art wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> 